Today on Ballistic Barbecue, I'm going to show you how to cook the perfect steak on a flat top griddle. Let's get going. And here are those steaks. These are both around one and a half pounds. This one's uh, like a couple ounces heavier than this, but USDA prime, just beautifully marbled and a couple inches thick. And as I said in the opening, I will be using my flat top on these two beautiful steaks. I'm going to show you how to get this done to where we have a gorgeous crust and it's not going to be overcooked or undercooked. So obviously before we start cooking, I want to season these and I'm using a coarse kosher salt. The reason I use kosher salt is just simply because it has no additives, no anti-caking agents, no iodine or anything like that. It's just pure salt flavor. Um, use whatever salt you want, but use a coarse salt. Sea salt's fine, you know, Himalayan salt. Uh, I would just stay away from the table salt because it does have those additives and it has a, a bit of a metallic -y flavor. I mean, taste compare the two. You'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. Now there is some debate on whether you should allow the steaks to come up to room temperature or, or whether or not it's necessary. I think it is. I think it just, you know, allows the steak to cook faster. The, the heat's not having to work as hard to bring that internal temperature up. That's what I believe. As far as the seasoning's concerned, I like to give the chance uh, for the seasoning, you know, the salts, to penetrate. And I'm a really big fan of uh, what some will call dry brining, salt brining, whatever. But basically what you do is season the salt as you normally would, the same amount that you normally would. Put the steaks on a rack and then put them uncovered in the refrigerator. And I usually do it overnight. On this particular uh, video, I decided just to go ahead and season them right before the cook. These will sit here probably a good 15, 20 minutes before we start cooking on the grill. I'm going to show you how we're going to set up the cook right now. So I'm using my wildfire griddle today and I'm cooking at a like a medium high heat. So when you're cooking steaks like this you're definitely going to want to have some type of fat. Choose your poison. I'm going with beef tallow. And this is Wagyu beef tallow. Now this particular griddle this is basically the, the griddle on a, a cart that they also have. And I need a cart because I don't have like some nice outdoor kitchen. I just sort of wheel my cookers around as I'm doing videos. So it's not exactly perfectly level where it's out here in the patio. Because of that, I also brought along a spatula that I'll be using to kind of keep the, the melted fat corralled in. I'm going to keep this on hand in case during the cook I feel the need to add a little bit more fat. Now the next thing I'm going to do is season this, uh, this oil here, Se season this fat. And I'm using whole peppercorns. And uh, the inspiration for doing this is uh, Szechuan cooking. Now these aren't Szechuan pepper kernels. If you guys want a really cool experience, go on Amazon or if your Asian market carries them and buy some real Szechuan pepper kernels. I can tell you, unless you have like kind of a, an Asian district where you live, the Szechuan food you're eating at these, you know, Chinese restaurants, they're not, it's not real Szechuan cooking. There is a, it, Szechuan pepper kernels are really, really cool. It actually kind of numbs your tongue a little bit. So I'm just going to keep these kind of moving around in this oil and what's going to happen, I can already smell it, the, the hot oil is going to cause these peppercorns to kind of bloom and they'll secrete oils into this, into this beef tallow. So this is going to be really good. All right, these peppercorns are sizzling away now and I'm getting an occasional pop. So I'm going to go ahead and start my cook. So I'll get these pushed out of the way right now. And like I said, as I feel the need, I will be adding more of this uh, tallow to the mix here. Wow, I'm smelling it.
for the first couple um, applications onto the griddle, I'm just using the steak weight, and it's not real heavy. We're not, you know, people, you're smashing all the, no, you're not, you're not smashing all the juices out of it. And we are going to be using the flip, flip, flip like hell technique. So I'm going to be flipping this like every 30 seconds, and we're going to continue that throughout the entire cook. What I'm trying to do is kind of nurture the crust. We don't want to develop a really quick crust because that's when we start that overcooking the steak. Another critical piece of equipment in this type of cook, you can get away without it on a really thin steak, but especially on these big, you know, two-inch thick steaks, you want, you want a good instant read thermometer because as I start developing that crust, I will be te testing the temperature, and I'll be pulling these steaks at 125 degrees Fahrenheit. So the whole strategy here is to not overcook the meat. You know, the, uh, if the griddle's running at 350 degrees or whatever, and we leave it here and only flip it once, you're gonna end up with maybe medium or in the dead center, but it's going to be overcooked on most of the, uh, most of the steak. You don't want that to happen. We've been at this a couple minutes and they're about 100 degrees inside. All right, we are done. And we are at about five minutes for the total cook. Um, we're at 125 now, and I'm going to allow these steaks to rest, and then slice them up and give you a try. And here are the steaks all rested up. You can see just a beautiful, nice, caramely crust on them, and they smell good. Before I slice them, I actually wanted to show you my new toy here. This is a Nakano chef's knife. This is from their Makarta series. Uh, they sent me this to try out the sample and uh, it's like 33 layers of Damascus steel. And I, you know, I've been using Shun knives for, for years now, so I'm pretty picky when it comes to knives. And I was doing some reading on this company. So this is a legitimate Japanese knife. They're made in Seiki City, which if anybody knows knives, Seiki City is like the Kobe is to beef, to knives. Um, this company's been around since 1918. They started out making katana swords, which is cool. Now they're making beautiful, beautiful knives. Um, this is, you know, one of their higher end knives, but they have some very, very, like incredibly affordable knives that are all made there um, in Seiki City. So check them out. I'll have a link with a discount code down below if you're interested. Let's try these steaks out. A little save that for later here. <laughs> yes, this knife is sharp. This is the first time using it. It's cutting through this like butter. And this is what I'm talking about. Just look at that. It, beautiful color. I mean, it's perfectly cooked. It got a nice crust on it, and I did it on a flat top. Cheers. <laughs> mm. Getting, you know, the, the, the salt and just a nice, slight, warmth, you know, peppery flavor. Mm. So good. There's absolutely nothing 
that I can complain about regarding this cook. Uh, I'm in love with this wildfire griddle. Um, sometimes we get lazy and it's nice not having to worry about this thing rusting. So that's a bonus. Um, my new knife, I'm digging on it. These steaks were awesome. Yeah, this is a good day, a good day for Greg. Anyway, make sure you check out the links below. I'll have a, a link down there for the wildfire griddle. Again, if you want a griddle that's going to last you probably, yeah, I'm, hopefully the rest of my life, this is the one for you. Um, well, again, if you're interested in the, the knives, these uh, Nakano knives, I'll link down there as well, again, with a discount code. Uh, anyway, if you're not subscribed, please think about subscribing. Hit that notification bell. Thumb it up if you like it. I hope you did. See you on the next video. Cheers.